last week we started by dealing with a gentleman called david so we are doing hi david and hi is h-i-g-h how i got here we want to find out how david rose up to the throne how david amassed so much wealth i made you understand last week that the guy was a wealthy guy blessed by all standards david had one of the largest amount of gold any man has ever possessed on the surface of the earth so David was a wealthy guy, but how did he get there? Let's find out from this scripture quickly. We'll do the two verses. The Bible says, Thus here the Lord, stand ye in the way, and see, and ask of the old path, where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your soul. But they said, We will not walk therein. And that's sad. Unfortunately, they said, We are not going to walk in it. Can you give me a different version? NLT, we read and then we take our seat i all right he says this is what the lord says stop at the crossroad and look around ask of the old godly way and walk in it travel in travel its path and you will find rest for your soul but they replied no that's not the road we want it's it's sad give me amplified let's let's finish with amplified and forgive me for making you stand but we just want to find out a few things he says that says the lord stand by the road and look and ask for the eternal path where where the good and old way is then walk in it and you will find rest for your soul but they said we will not walk in it can you lift up your right hand and say i'll walk in that way and i'll access the blessings that are there my life will never be the same after this word if you agree slap your hands together you may be seated we got to know that david was one of the outstanding kings that ever lived and interestingly david did not just live in the past but he he has glories of the past that are pending in present times in other words people are still in love with david i made you understand that among the main religions we have the three major ones christianity islam and judaism still try to connect to david and at times you ask yourself why the guy is dead and gone many 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 i don't know how many many i can say many 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 years ago and and yet so much value is placed on him by all these three religions there must be something david did that made his life so outstanding how many of you agree with me there are people that are dead and gone and we still celebrate them there were things that he did there were things he put together there were principles that he applied and all we are trying to do here is to understand that principles work for us keep this on your mind principles work so we are finding out the principles they applied to their lives that brought them to where they got to in other words no matter who you are no matter where you stand it doesn't matter your background it doesn't matter who gave birth to you i mean it has nothing to do with what you have your academic background once you are ready to apply the principles it will work that was why he stated clearly he says find out the old path go to the ascent ways and he says if you are able to discover the ascent path and you walk in it you will find something good once it is a word that is coming from god i see rewards coming your direction it will not be an ordinary reward it is not meant for everybody but as many that are ready for it i pray that you access it to the fullest by the close of the year your testimony shall be awesome lift up your right hand and shout i am the word by the time the year comes to a close you will count your blessing and to build be, be your imagination by the time 2019 is ended you will count your houses you will count your cars you will count your achievement you will count your, your projects you will count the contracts you have received it will blow your mind little rather than say i believe and i receive it oh i'm looking for just nine millionaires that came to church can you jump out of your seat shout i believe and i receive it that is the god factor you just can't do anything about if god blesses a man 
you waste your time trying to mess him up. Talk somebody sitting by you and say, don't waste your time on me. I'm a blessed man. Uh, tell somebody, I am blessed of the Lord. You can use your mouth to destroy me, but the more you destroy me, the better and greater I will become. Because a man that is blessed by God cannot be destroyed by a man. Ladies and gentlemen, David went through all kinds of painful situations. His own father forgot about him, but the God factor was still speaking. His own father could not even count him among his hands. The prophet looked at him and he said, I hear all thy children. I, I, I am looking out for your children. And he says, I just remembered. I have counted those who are here, but I forgot to count one that is at the back side of the desert. You will not be counted by men, but you shall be counted by God. Men will forget you. Men will slash you aside. As far as the promotion is concerned, you might not be considered by men, but when God decides to step into the affairs of your life, men have no option but to respond to God. Lift up your hands and say, I have the God factor. Can I talk to somebody and say boldly, say, I have the God factor. Once the Lord is on your side, the Bible says, if God be for us, who can be against us? The Lord is on my side. He says, even though I am walking through the valley of the shadow of death, life may be challenging, but the Lord is with me. I don't know who has the Lord with you. In January, the Lord was with you. Was with you. In February, he will be with you. In the rest of the year, the Lord shall be on your side. And because God is with you, you shall be victorious. Because God is with you, you will get that job. Because God is with you, you will receive that visa. Am I talking to recipients of the blessing? Lift up your hands and say, I have God on my side. God factor, ladies and gentlemen, is very key. When God is in the affairs of your life, failure becomes something that is far away from you. And we also got to know that David was keeping his father's sheep. He was busy with something. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a problem with people that are waiting for God's blessing, but they are not putting their hands to work. Are you, are you waiting for money to drop from heaven? I know manna can fall, but it happens once in a while. Hallelujah. But the Bible says he will bless the work of your hands. And David was a shepherd. He was busy taking care of his father's sheep. Can you touch the person sitting by you and say, what do you do? If you're a preacher, say, I'm a preacher. Tell the person, answer the person. If you are a thief, say it before, before, before we, we begin to deal with you here. Whatever you do is very key. David was a keeper of sheep. He was taking care of his father's sheep. He had a profession. He had something he was doing. And he did not just do it, but he did it with all his might and with all his strength. And I'll be dealing with that. He sacrificed for sheep. The guy was ready to fight lions to rescue a sheep. And it didn't make sense. Fighting lions because of a sheep. But, but that is to tell you how you can protect and secure things that don't look great looking at the fact that it might not be great in the now but it has a future See, so there is a need to learn how to handle properly what the lord has given you even when david was leaving his father's sheep, the bible says he left it in the care of another man that shows you that his heart was knitted to that particular assignment he says i am leaving but i'll not leave my sheep just to die i'll make sure they are protected and secure and by that he rose up you must learn to secure what you have find something to do and do it with every strength that you have. Another thing we mentioned, the point number four, we talked about David knew how to resist discouragers. People that discourage. He knew how to resist them. He stood against them. He fought against them. He did everything possible not to allow discouragement to weigh him down. Can I talk to somebody? There are a lot of people in town that are discouraging. They will tell you it is not possible. They will tell you you will fail. They will tell you this one, I tried it the other time. It did not work for me, so you, it will not work for you. You are you. I am me. What did not work for you can work for me. Am I talking to somebody? I came here to encourage somebody. Keep doing what you are doing. Keep pushing on. Keep pressing on. It is possible you arrive at the other side one of these days. If you agree with me, lift up your hands and say, I'll get there. Do I still have my nine millionaires who came to church? Lift up your right hand and say, I'll get there. If anybody had told those who started years ago, I, I drove past one of the beautiful edifices we have around East Ligon just, just last week. 
I think I was with one of the guys, some of the folks in this church, and I was taking a look at, at Despite's building, and, and I got to know this guy used to sell cassette. If anybody had told him at that time that he can cross from just an ordinary cassette seller, just around town, and rise up to a place where he has a, a powerful building of this sort, nobody would have believed him. Talk to yourself and say, I will make it, I will make it. Can you do it with, with, with some swag? Say, I will make it. I don't care what I'm going through, I will make it. I might be renting today but i'll be a processor of estates in the future i might be struggling to feed today but it's just a matter of time talk to somebody sitting by you and say you watch what will happen in my life tell the person i'm not getting discouraged what you say will not change my mind i am pressing on i will keep doing what i'm doing it will produce results one of these days if i'm talking to you lift your hands and say i believe and i receive it it will happen it will happen now one of the things David did that brought him to where he got to which was so outstanding is the fact that he was hard working. Let me just start with that one. David was hard working. Give me first Samuel chapter 17 verse number 34 to 36. The guy was hard working to the extent that he was ready to fight lions, fight bears. Now there are some things can you give me scripture please? First Samuel chapter 17 34 to 36. 1 Samuel 17, 34 to 36, the Bible talks about how David was bragging of his hard work. He says, and David said unto Saul, thy servant kept his father's sheep. Did you check that one? It wasn't his sheep. It was his father's sheep, but he was still hard working. There are some of us, we only get hard working when it is ours. When I am the senior pastor, that is when I'll put in all my effort. When I am the boss, I am the CEO, that is when my effort will be found. Ladies and gentlemen, tell your neighbor, work hard, whether it is yours or not. Work hard, whether it belongs to you or not. Wherever you find yourself, put in an effort. He was taking care of his father's sheep and he worked so hard to defend the sheep that did not belong to him but his father. That was why God gave him a nation. Ladies and gentlemen, Man, your hard work will pay tomorrow. Touch your neighbor and say, What you are doing today will yield results tomorrow. It pays. And, and you know, it's unfortunate. Those of us, those pe folks who got the opportunity to work in corporate organizations or, or government institutions, by the time you quit and begin your own, interestingly, the same attitude you had at post when you were working for someone it's the same attitude you carry along so if you messed up there you mess up your own business if you are hard working and committed to what you were doing it will be the same thing he says and David said unto Saul thy servant kept his father's sheep and there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock and the last time I checked it is not David's sheep it is his father's sheep so if a lion and a bear has come to pick one on Van Gogh, up. <laughs> take it away I mean that's none of my business somebody will say Charlie there are some things you don't risk your life for there are some things you have to be careful it, it, is it for you I'm not, I'm not surprised if you're a pastor here somebody might look at you when you are going early so I say I don't ask for Nana that is the mentality we have as black people once it is not you who is the head it, 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 it must not be your border it must not be your burden and david said move to the next verse quickly move to the next verse let's read up to 36 35 and he says and i went after him it is not my sheep but i went after the lion i went after the bear he says i went after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth and when he arose against me i caught him by the beard and smote him and slew him the guy was bragging about something he did for his father it is easy to do something for yourself but if you are able to do it for others it means you can do it even better for yourself can I say that again? It is very easy. It is very easy to buy a dress for yourself and, and, and look at it and admire it. But if you can buy it for another person, that shows that you have arrived at a place where anything can be done by you. It, it is easy to pick up money and, and spend it all by yourself. But if you can give that same money to the things of God, that means you have arrived. The Bible says he did all this not for himself, but for his father. He says he slew the lion for his father. Risk his life for other people go to 36 let's end it there 
Thy servant slew both lion and bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he had defiled, defied the army of the living God. Yet again, David did not end there. He was still fighting for the nation of Israel, laboring and risking his life, working hard. Even the tools they gave him was not convenient for him to use. Yet he said, that is not what I need. What I have, I can still make use of it and work hard even to the glory of God. Ladies and gentlemen, you are too young to be lazy. Can I talk to somebody? I said, you are too young to be lazy. I have a problem with people that keep idling around. And you ask them, I'm just watching something. Make use of your strength. Even if you don't have a job yet, you have not been employed yet, start doing something bit by bit. Get something to sell. Whilst you are waiting for the main thing. Am I in touch with somebody? Before the good job arrives, do the odd jobs. Before you get the best, do the little you can until the best arrives lift up your hands and say help me lord help me lord never waste your time as a believer at times people take a look at you and they think you just got where you are today and ladies and gentlemen when you see someone at the top they went through all these things touch yourself and say give me grace to be hard working 2019 no time to waste 2019 no time for gossip 2019 no time for idling around i'm not wasting my time again look at the person sitting by you and say if you don't have anything to do don't come to my house i want to put my hands to something i want to be busy about something because I must generate results for myself. Am I helping somebody here this morning? I believe in church, but you must not, you must not spend all your time in church. Somebody's in, in, in church Monday, Tuesday, you are in church. Are you a pastor? Are you a pastor? So I've, I've, every day is church. I'm not saying church is not good, but if that is not where you work, then find something to do get better at that way make it stronger you use it to kill the lion develop it to kill goliath you use it to slay the bear develop it even to attack goliath you can use it to save a whole nation do you remember what david said he says the other day i had an ability that saved the sheep but today that same ability is developed in love it is not saving a sheep it is saving a whole nation there was a nation called philistine that rose up against the nation Israel and with the same ability I developed as a shepherd boy I have now brought it to a level where it is now national a nation against a nation Goliath was killed by the same ability that David had all because it was developed touch yourself and say help me develop what I have say oh Lord give me grace to develop my ability so that I can take it to another level if you believe it can you shout a big amen to the glory of God develop what you are at times I take a look at people and it happens among men a lot when we meet the last time Chelsea received six goals have you realized that when you are watching football before in between and after there are some guys that come and sit down and all they do is the same thing we do at home you know they should have featured this one and if they had featured that particular guy and put him in the center he would have done proper distribution and he would send it to the to the to the side so that this one will be supplying the one that will be they say all okay. kinds and that's exactly how we talk that somebody has developed his own and he's on bbc sitting down and when he's done with the same thing that you do somebody says the same thing is on tv beautifully dressed they had, he had makeup on his face. When he's done, they give him some cool dollars, put in his pocket, and he's gone. And you went, did the same, they slapped you. They slap you just like that. One of the things I realized about David was the fact that he was a finisher. David was a finisher. If you really want to see success in life, Give me 1750, verse number 50 of the chapter number 17. David was a finisher. And that is why, if you really want to succeed in life, make up your mind that I will not start what I cannot finish. It also means before you even take a decision to start it, 
then you should analyze it really well that's why I believe that when it comes to even relationship it must be the same thing so if somebody comes proposing to you and then tell the person I shall see who be we because if you are not ready to finish then there is no need to even start it must be alpha and omega so once you are starting you can develop you can grow it a lot of the institutions we see today heavyweight institutions that we are excited about it started from somewhere Jesus hung on the cross and that was his assignment at 33 years he made a statement he said it is finished I started this thing my purpose was to come to die for humanity, to shed my blood for salvation. And indeed, I have done it. And I'm, you know, that alone brings up finishing a thing is satisfying. Whatever you start. See David here. The Bible says, so David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling. Not with the sword. With a sling. He didn't have a knife. He didn't have a sword. He didn't have all those tools. It was not accessible with a sling and with a stone. And he smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in David's hand. In other words, David had dealt with Goliath. He struck him with a stone by the help of God. Goliath has fallen. But the Bible says at that point in time, he did not even have a sword in his hands. But David had a finisher's man. He says, what if it was a stone that hits the head of the guy? What if Goliath rises up and comes back again and creates a mess of my life? I must finish what I have started. So see what happened. Move to the next verse, verse number 51. I love this. Therefore, David ran and stood on Goliath. Can I prophesy over somebody? I pray that this year, those who threaten you, those who messed up with you, those who were shouted on top of their voices that you will not find success in life, they will fall and you will stand on them. Uh, I'm talking to just 19 people that came to church. I said they shall fall and you'll be on top of them. The last time I checked, 40 days, 40 nights, Goliath did not allow these guys to sleep. He was shouting, scaring them. He says, bring a man and I will deal with him. I've been fighting for all this while, but I prophesy your Goliaths are fall. I said your Goliaths are fall. Whatever frustrated you, frustrated this year. I'm looking for the recipient of this prophetic word. If you are ready, lift your hands and shout, I believe and I receive it. Goliath fell and the Bible says David ran and he stood and took out his sword not David's sword Goliath's sword he says he took his sword and drew it out of the sheet thereof and slew him and the Bible says he went ahead to cut off his hair and that is the finishing point ladies and gentlemen if you have you are done with that snake and you don't you don't take off the head the possibility of it getting revived and coming against you again is high but when there is no head there is no way he can rise up again the Bible says and he cut off his head and when the Philistines saw the champion's head ah, I feel like staying here for a moment when every one of the people that were behind Goliath they saw David holding the head of the Philistine they knew that what was started is complete I prophesy over your life you shall be a finisher I said you shall be a finisher you will complete what you have started nothing will resist you this year I declare over your life in the name of Jesus whatever resisted you whatever stood against the business whatever stood against your progress whatever decided to fight you to prevent you from making progress I stand in the name of he that died and rose up on the third day that you shall overcome them and you shall cut off their head. I said you shall cut off their head. I came there with a prophetic word for somebody. The enemy shall not rise again because you shall finish them. I am looking for some 13 people that are ready to catch this grace. Lift up your hands, jump out of your seat. Shout, I believe and I receive it. Can you clap your hands and give God a shout of praise wherever you are under the sound of my voice give him some praise if you are not done you are not taking any rest there is a lot of rest even after death ladies and gentlemen finish your assignment be hard work and press on until you are done make sure that every head is taken off let me run through the final one and then we'll be out of here in a jiffy stay here 
and slew him and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. They fled. There is something about finishing that makes even the enemy. You know, just like we meet and we talk, even witches and wizards, evil powers, they also communicate. And to, today I prophesy over somebody that may God give you grace to finish and for that matter you be a talk of town as far as the, the camp of the enemy is concerned and they will give a signal that this guy don't try him if you dare he will finish you and cut off your head so they, they begin they begin to even get afraid to come near you the bible says and the rest they fled may your enemies flee today i said may they flee may they run away because you will finish this time i feel like talking to somebody in particular this time the marriage issues have been complete this time the traveling issue is to be complete this time that thing you have started don't give up it is prayer prayer until you see the manifestation don't give up move to 52 see something that is there. I'm looking for the Bible says and the men of Israel and of Judah arose I love this let me tell you something until you accomplish something forget support David slew the guy and all of a sudden the men of Israel and Judah gained confidence some people are looking up to you my dear friend this thing is not just about you I'm closing here it goes beyond you men and women are waiting for you to succeed don't disappoint can I encourage somebody don't disappoint someone is waiting for you to become a millionaire and make you his mentor Somebody's waiting for you to succeed. And say, once this guy came from this village and was able to build that house and became a name, I can also get there. Don't disappoint them. It's not just about you. It's about those who are behind. All of a sudden, men of Israel and men of Judah start, they arose and shouted and pursued. So they could shout. Everybody was mute when Goliath was shouting. But immediately he slain Goliath. Everything changed. David took the head of the Philistines and brought it to Jerusalem. That was his trophy. And he put his armor in his tent. Keep moving. Keep going. And when Saul saw David go forth against the Philistine, he said unto Abner, the captain of hosts, Abner, whose son is this youth? You know, do you know that you get to a place where even though they know you, they now want to know you. <laughs> I feel like talking to somebody in particular here. Where your own mother looks at you and says, I never a granny. The achievement is wild. The, 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 the accomplishment is great. You, you just hit the thing right there. And your own father looks at you and says, ah, Is this my son? See what he says. He says, Whose son is this youth? And Abner said, As I so live at Okin, I cannot tell. <laughs> I cannot tell. To cut a long story short, let me just end it. Then suddenly the women came through. Can find that scripture for me. And they composed a song. And they said, David has killed 10,000. Saul was able to kill only 1,000. That was, that was what even messed up the whole issue. But the last time I checked, David killed only Goliath. It was the men that went to kill the others. If you make an effort to deal with the major problem, they will attribute all the solutions to you for doing what you have done. He killed 10,000. Saul so killed only 1,000. I want to encourage someone. David rose up there. You can also get there. All you need to do is to put in the principles. Apply them. 